I realize I say amazing way too much, way too much. Internet and welcome back. A um, couple weeks ago, I posted my top 10 Frank Zappa albums, all the ones released while he was alive. So 1993 and prior. Um, and now I'm going into each one a little bit uh, in more in depth to explain why I like it and why I think you should listen to it. Um, and now we are here for my number one, uh, which is Uncle Meat. Um, if you've listened to this album, if you've heard this album, if you go listen to this album after I've told you to, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about this album, whether you think it deserves to be Frank's number one. Um, I think it does. Also, let me know what your top 10 albums are, or your favorite Frank are, or anything you've discovered with Frank, maybe on after watching these. That's my, my goal here, is to spread the love um, of music, especially Frank. I have a lot more time in COVID. I'm working from home, I'm Zooming a lot. So I need these musical breaks, and so trying to give more people stuff to listen to. But anyways, number one, my favorite album, Uncle Meat. It is sort of his, sort of his official last Mother's release. Um, even though he did put out a couple more Mother's albums, Weasels, Rip My Flesh, and Burnt Weenie Sandwich, both of which made my top 10 list. Um, he broke up the Mother shortly after this, did the Hot Rats thing. Um, uh, had Flo and Eddie involved, he went a different direction. So this was sort of the last final hurrah of the original Mother's Band um, with Ian Underwood joining later and being on this. Um, this, what, this is an album, it's two LPs. Um, I think this is the most, I think I've said this a lot, but now that we're here, this is the most Frank Zappa, Frank Zappa album. Um, it's got guitar solos, it's got spoken word bits, um, not like poetry, but like whatever it is his spoken word stuff is people in pianos or this is mostly uh, I think groupies talking and band members talking on this one um, It has guitar solos um, It has songs actual real songs. I might have already said that it's got his instrumental like classical type instrumental pieces It's got some live tracks and all of side four is King Kong so you get King Kong, you get some solos, and then you get King Kong on the back of a flatbed truck, I think is actually the entire name of the track, um, is how the entire album uh, on a flatbed diesel in the middle of a racetrack at the Miami Pop Festival. So you get that um, also uh, with Ian Underwood soloing. soloing. But anyways, um, there's a little bit of everything over the course of the uh, four sides, or I think it was one and a half CDs. It was There was filler material on the CD release. Um, this album has always been one of my favorite, but it was closer to like the nine and 10 spot for decades. I mean, four decades. It's a difficult album. Um, there's a lot of really abrupt edits. Um, you'll go from a really clean, nice pop instrumental to some loud feedback uh, to an actual song, to some conversation, to a solo. Like it's all over the map. And uh, it took me a while to like get it, to like find the groove and like fine, like, oh yeah, this makes sense going here, this makes sense. It's not as abrupt or jarring as, well, it still is abrupt and jarring, but I'm prepared for the abrupt jarringness of it. Um, and it took me a while to really get it. And I think um, in the last 10 years, I've been listening to Zappa since the mid 80s when I was in high school. I think it was in the past 10 years when it kind of inched its way up to the top. And I'm like, you know, this really is, like, I don't think, I think this is the pinnacle of everything he did. He wrote songs after this that I like better than the songs on here. Um, he put albums that I think are amazing, but I think as a from A to Z album, this is the peak of the peak of Frank. It's got everything he would do. It like references everything. Frank was into conceptual continuity, the big note, how everything was part of, like every song he played and every track he recorded, everything that ever happened with Frank musically was part of the big note and it all mattered. There's a lot of things in here that contribute to the big note. Um, so from a hardcore fan, returning back to this over the years has been infinitely rewarding. Like I'm still listening to this and like, oh my goodness, how did I not notice that after all these years? Um, so it's an amazing album. And side A, the first side of this album might be my favorite side in all of Frank. Um, and I think it is why I like this album is the sequencing on side A is 
is ridiculous. And I always try to imagine like buying an album for the first time, like what that experience is. You've heard Frank, you know he's gonna push the envelope. You've had Freak Out, you've had Absolutely Free, you've had We're Only In It For The Money. You know this craziness is gonna come, right? So side A starts with the instrumental theme from Uncle Me. This is a theme that uh, the 73 and 74 band did a lot, uh, dog breath variations into Uncle Me. So uh, a lot of you might know that if you've heard some of his other stuff. That goes into Susie Cream Cheese, who has a spoken part, says something. And then this goes in to nine types of industrial pollution, which is like a guitar solo, a really kind of weaselly, kind of snaky guitar solo with like a, just a percussion jam that goes over it for like six minutes. And it's like people just jamming out, hitting things as Frank kind of, and almost like he's slithering his way through and around the instruments over the course of the solo. Um, this goes into another instrumental, Zoller Zackle, which I'm not sure I'm saying that right. I don't think I've ever heard anybody actually say these words, so I don't know what it's called. Um, and then, track five, you get a song. You get an actual real song. You get Dog Breath, the one that the Flo and Eddie band would do. Um, that version. Primer mi carucho, Chevy 39. Sorry for my accent, sorry for my singing. You get that song. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, we're here. We've, this is something I recognize. It's a song, it's something, it's like a life preserver in this like sea of noise. Um, midway through that, or a little over midway, it starts falling apart into weird, crazy noises. Um, then that goes into a really strange version of a pound for a brown on the bus called the legend of the golden arches which is like pound for a brown on the bus just slow down and play it in a slightly different way um and then that goes into a live version of louie louie with the uh organ from the royal albert hall and it's loud and it's like ah and then that goes back into the dog breath variations i mean that's the end of side a i mean it's just a perfect side of music one song with like what you recognize as like vocals and like a real song in the middle just surrounded by all this like incredible composition and guitar playing and live performances and instrumentals it's just a phenomenal about it's like 20 minutes of music i think is what it is and uh the other sides are not as perfect for me but they're also pretty great and that's pretty much the sequencing that each side goes through you get a couple little just sweet sugar filled treats you get noise you get solos you get talking um, and that's all three sides of the album until you get to side four, which is King Kong, um, just a King Kong, which is a great, one of their, his great instrumental jam songs. Um, and that's how side four is, it's just King Kong with solos um, and then a live version at the end on the flatbed of, of a diesel at the Miami Pop Festival. Um, it's an amazing album. Um, it is not easy. It's something that I struggled with for a couple years, like to get it. You know, to make it through an entire album was rough, but once I got it, I, I've loved it more than any other album, I think. Um, he also, back in 2016, I believe, uh, uh, the year I believe, the Zappa Family Trust uh, released Meet Light. It might have been 2018, it might have been a 50 year release, but I don't think it was, I think it was 2016. Uh, but Meet Light uh, contained Uncle Meat, and then it also contained what is billed as the original sequencing of Uncle Meat. Um, and side A in particular, it's a completely different experience. It starts off with dog breath and then goes into other stuff. Um, and just putting the pop song up first and then having all the weirdness follow. And then it's just, it's a whole different experience. So I highly recommend if you like this album and haven't heard Meat Light, or if you're gonna check out this album, check out this album a lot. Get to know this album. Get to know the original sequencing. Then check out Meat Light and listen to, not the original sequencing, get to know this sequencing, the one that was eventually released. Then go back and listen to what Frank originally proposed. Not only does the sequencing make almost every song feel different. Um, some of the things are in the same order. Like some of the chunks kind of have the same sequence, but they're not all of them are and so it is a different experience king kong is just like one track now in the middle of the album instead of the end of the album and there's a lot of little things like that but there are two guitar solos not on the officially released uncle meat that are on this original pressing that are phenomenal phenomenal definitely worth checking out um even if you don't like this album go track down meat light and check out those guitar solos because they are keepers man they're they're mixtape worthy so yeah so that's it man 
Uncle Me, my favorite album. Check it out. Um, I have nothing but praise for it. If you don't like it at first, stick with it because it is worth the time, I promise you. And that's it. So now that I'm done with these 10, y'all, y'all, um, I'm going to do my top 10 songs next, uh, the ones released during Frank's uh, lifetime. So look for that video in the next couple of days. And then I got so much time on my hands, I think I'm going to go into depth on each little song because I got a lot to say about these songs. But again, uh, in the comments below, I'd like to know what you think about Frank, Uncle Meat, this album, your favorite Frank albums, things in general, stuff that sounds like Frank you think I should check out in case you don't think I already have because um, I got time. I got time, people. So that's it, man. Have a good day. Be safe out there, and I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Good night and good luck.